Okay, where we had left off, we had added uh, three tables, images, manufacturers, and product. The whole idea is that we're going to add product with these attributes here. Um, and those one of those attributes is a manufacturer's ID, which is going to be tied to this table. We're not going to add anything that isn't in this table. And, and we're also going to add an image that is related to that product. So if you see this image here, it's going to be tied to this product ID. Product is not going to be aware of this. Image is aware of product. The one thing that I had left off was type, what type of file it is. And so I had to add this uh, field in here uh, to make that clear. The other thing I'm going to do since I'm here in the back end is I'm going to add a couple of manufacturers. You see I added Inesco and Adams and Company. Because when I add my product, I want those to be a drop down. So the first thing is I go over to my product controller and I have to uh, make sure that since the adding and uh, deleting of products is inside the administration module, I want the view and the layouts to be within that. And so I eliminate the double quote and just put the, I'm sorry, the, the double forward slash and do the single forward slash. And that'll say now that all of the views will be similar to what is in the administration module. The next thing is I change the access rules so that create, update, admin, delete, index, and view all have to be done by someone who has add product. I won't go over the uh, rules-based hierarchy again, but that is a rule in this controller. I will go change the view later, but for now I'm focusing on create. Normally the generic uh, control controller has just model here. Um, but I'm going to be using two models, the product model and the image model. And so uh, since I'm going to be affecting those tables, I'm going to distinguish them by calling each one of those models um, by the appropriate name. Now, remember that the post command says that a form was submitted. If there wasn't a post command, then what it's going to do is it's just going to go and render from the create view. And what I'm passing to the create view is two variables, well an array with two variables, product model, which obviously gets the product model object, and image model, which gets the image model object. Let's um, look at that really quickly here. This create view um, sets up the menu and breadcrumbs, and then it just says render partial with this view, the underscore form, and we'll look at that in a second. Now normally the default is for this just to be model, but what we're saying now is uh, it's product model, and it's going to get that object, and image model is going to get that object. So because I'm passing in two, I distinguish those and not just have the single model. This um, calls the underscore form view, and this is again uh, a, a little bit of review from what we did with users, so I'm going quickly. The one thing that's different from users is I have this HTML options which says that the type is multi-part form data. Now that's absolutely necessary in order for me to do an upload of a file. I've got to have that in there, otherwise I can't upload the file. Everything else looks pretty normal. Now again, the, the default one is just model, but I'm saying here that it's product model. So I get the uh, names of the fields by product model, um, and on and on. Um, I go over here. Uh, now and I have my drop down and it's manufacturers. This wasn't passed in. The model is specified specifically here in this view and it says uh, give me a list of all, find all of the manufacturers, uh, give me their name and I'll pass you the ID and I'll show you where it gets passed in. Um, so I get the all of that from the manufacturers model. Now here is where I am going to attach an image. Uh, and in this form, I have a file field. And I'm going to pass um, to the product model a file. Okay, And so th by using this file field, I will be a button that will allow me to look on my desktop or anywhere for a file. And then finally, I have my uh, submit button here and in the widget. So that's the end of my form. Let's see what that looks like here. So you see name, alternate name, description, price, and here's my drop down with those two suppliers. 
and then this choose file here which will allow me to find a file. Now just to talk about the strategy a little bit here, the name does not have to be unique. So for example when I actually view the product, which I don't have any to view right now, I could have several products with the same name but I have to have a unique alternate name and that's going to be used in the URL and what distinguishes one from another. So for example this product that I'm going to add I'm going to call this Anna and Elise. I could also call it Disney uh, figurine, I can call it anything like that. You can see here is the product I'm going to add, this right here. Uh, I could call it uh, anything I like, the, the name is what you would normally see up here. Uh, we could call it Disney Traditions Elsa and Anna Sisters Forever, sure why not. We'll call it that and that is what is going to be in the customer view. This alternate name is what is going to be the URL and I am going to have Anna and Elise from Frozen as the alternate name. That is going to be the unique name for these characters. The description here I could put anything and I'm not telling you what the strategy is about copying images and, and descriptions. You, you shouldn't do it. Um, but for now we're going to do that. And I'm going to say that the price is $79 and I'm going to say that my cost is uh, forty dollars. Okay, it comes from Inesco. Let's see what my part number is. I get it from the Inesco website. This helps in inventory that I'm not completely set up to do. But now I'm going to choose a file. And when I choose a file it just allows me your standard desktop. And you can see it's uh, marked by this uh, number here, this product number. Um, and then I'm going to create it. And it's all in there beautifully. But let's go see what was in the database. But before we do that, let's go back and see what happened in the controller. I can close these. I showed you what was in the form and how it got there. But let's look at now at this product controller. Here we are in the create. Now the first thing I did was I said, well, there was no post command, meaning show me the form. And that we went through right here. Now we actually have a post command when I hit the submit button. So I know that there's some data there. From, from that data I get all of the attributes that apply to the product model. Now the manufacturer's ID I have to get specifically from the manufacturer's drop down box right there. That allows me to get that. And again the date created and last updated very similar to what we did in the users and then I save the model and if I'm able to save the model I then fill my image model again the date created and last updated the product ID I can only get that if the product model saved correctly notice I didn't set the ID anywhere here this product model will get it because when I save it to the table it's auto um, automatically incremented and gives me the value for ID and now I can use it to put it into the image model let's look over really quickly see how that works. We got our product here. You can see it in the table. My product ID is 7. Okay. And if I go over to my images, I can see my product ID is 7. It matches that one right there. Now, here's where I'm going to create a temporary variable to get the uploaded file. Okay, I've got the uploaded file. Remember I showed you product model and file, product model and file is where I get the temporary file. Now I need to find out what file type it is. And I do that with this little simple lookup here I created in my components, my utility here, file extension from MIME. Okay, that's my uh, file that I wrote. So it's um, uh, my utility, that's the object, file extension from MIME. I pass in the type. Okay, I content type and I map it to an extension. This is the only way that I could know I know how to do it. In fact, extensions aren't unique enough uh, to make this work 100% of the time. This is what I'm saying if you got any of these, these are the extensions. Um, this allows me to load those files, but it's not perfect. 
Okay, so now I've got my file type, and if you go over to the database and you see the images, you can see it's a type JPEG, determined correctly. And now I can save the images model. Now I've saved the images model, all that does is enter it into the database, makes these entries here. That's all it does. But now I have to save the file. And where I'm going to save the file is I get it from the model, the URL, which if you look in this case, the URL is images. Okay, so I get the URL and then I get the image mo um, model ID. This again is auto incremented, so it's number two. I don't care what the name of the file was that was uploaded. It's going to be unique because it's picking it up from the primary key that's auto incremented. And then it's going to attach dot the uh, image type. Okay and then I'm going to redirect to the product model and view it itself. So let's look here in our images folder at my root and you can see here I've got this right here which is this image. Okay, and it's 2.jpg. Okay, now I have this other one here that I'd done previously. I'll just delete that because it's not anywhere in the table. Another thing that I don't do well is what if I accidentally do an alternate name that's similar, it has to be unique, and if I don't, uh, it, it doesn't fail very well. It, you know, obviously it fails dramatically, which isn't good. The other thing I do here is I've changed my update so that it allows me to make updates to the uh, description and whatnot, but I don't handle how I add more images or change the image or anything like that. So I haven't I haven't f fleshed that out completely. Okay, so that is that is the simple way that I have been able to add products. Uh, in the next one, we're going to want to be able to view the product. Now here I'm looking at the product from an administrator point of view. I definitely am going to want to change this, but I want to see what it looks like not in the administration module but in this module right here. And I'm going to make some changes before we start doing that. But you want to see a view of the actual product. So the key thing that we did this time was the file upload. Um, other things that we had done before by changing the, uh, the, the drop-down box and changing the view to get to this point.